Hey everybody, boys, that's VK Force. Welcome to the crosses section for July 23rd to July 27th, 2018. And on the crosses side, I've sort of gone off the um, uh, off the path a little bit, taking a look at a couple of interesting ideas for the week that I think may have much longer term runs. So it's worth taking a look at it, not just perhaps even for this week, but maybe as a multi-week ideas because I've expanded the ranges for you to consider. First and foremost, we talked about the idea that Aussie Yen is the poster child for the trade war on off trade. What's interesting to me is that it's actually looking bid at this point. It's an 8284 range. It was sort of in the middle of there, but it looks like it could make a move towards the 84s much more than towards 82s. I'll take a look at the charts just one second. Kiwi CAD really operating still on that massive decline um, that the Kiwi had a couple a week ago. It's an 988 trade, very, very slow moving trade. But I really like this on the, this is sort of a mild version of pro cat trade. Remember I said the Canadian data was very strong, that BOC certainly in a much more rate hiking mode than RBNZ ever will be. And that possibly puts us at an advantage here. Um, and I'll take a look at this, I'll take a look at the uh, chart here because it looks very similar to sort of like the old Euro chart off the ECB in terms of a very, very sharp breakdown and then just a distribution for the last couple of days with potential now to revisit the low supported 88. And Euro pound, the big story here, I think is knocking on 90 door. That's the really big story. It's really, it's, it's a Brexit trade in many ways. It's perhaps maybe even just the Euro coming back towards through, through the key levels trade. It's all those things. Um, it's setting up this week. We had a little bit of a retrace at the end of the week um, and it's still looking very much like an uptrend trade. So very much worth taking a look. Let's, let's look at the charts here and I'll start with Euro pound first. Because um, because I think it's it's kind of very interesting. So obviously this is a this is a daily chart. We're above the long-term moving average, the so 500, uh, 500 period SMA. We are trending well above the um, the Bollinger Bands on the upper side here. Uh, definitely came up against this 89, 50, 90 resist point and kind of tracing back. But it's a very you know it's still a mild retrace. We haven't even taken out the lows of the day prior here. So in many ways it's sort of a perfect. Um, Perfect dip entry, right? It's a perfect dip entry for a longer term trade. The key idea here is if we get positive data of the Eurozone and if, if Draghi is not as dour as he was before, um, it just provides ump for the Euro. It's a sort of a, uh, a derivative way to trade long Euro. And I think it could take out, I mean, especially, especially if we take out this 89.50, it puts us very much on a path towards 90, which is a really critical area. Let's take a look at a weekly and um, the monthly charts, the weekly, we're literally right at this 89.50 resist point, right? But if we can break that out, there's nothing stopping us until 92. It's just, you know, it's setting itself up. It also looks very, very healthy on a weekly basis because you have this series of higher lows, a big breakout candle taking out the, the highs of a week prior, and it just is screaming to wants to go higher. I love this chart. I love this trade. I think fundamentally and technically it's kind of setting up uh, in a perfect manner. Now, Kiwi can't actually, no, let's do Aussie Yen first, then we'll do Kiwi Yen. So Aussie Yen, to me, this is the weekly trade, the weekly chart, not really showing much on the weekly chart, only that it didn't really test the low end of the, of the weekly candle, kind of mid-range mid here. But if you look at the dailies, this is where I find it kind of interesting. Um, it's not, you know, a super bullish looking chart here, but here we held the 20 SMA, right? We're still underneath the, uh, uh, the long-term moving average, so it's still very much a range-bound trade. But within the range... It looks like it's making a higher low. It ended up more or less um, near the highs of the day. And, um, you know, if Yen just kind of stabilizes, um, Aussie gets the ump from the uh, CPI data. We certainly have scope here to go to 83, maybe 83.50. I'm not arguing for a big, large, <clears throat> massive move to the upside. But what I think is fine surprising about this chart is that it actually looks more healthy than not. And therefore, the bias is to the upside rather than to the downside. And then last but not least, look at this Kiwi CAD. And this is really worthwhile looking um, on a longer term chart base. Let me just first, let's look at the uh, weekly chart, right? Look at this weekly chart. We just, this is, this is a very, very similar candle to that massive um, Euro candle that we saw in July on a daily base where, you know, we have just a sharp move to the downside. And then we're now just consolidating, you know, digesting this particular price impulse. But what's interesting is as we're digesting this price impulse, there's scope here to go and test more to the downside, right? Especially if you think that Canada 
uh, trades well this week, that it's sort of, you know, post strong data gets a bid here. If Basically, if Canada breaks 31, if Dollar Canada can break 31 to the downside, this creates uh, momentum for us to move all the way down to certainly 89s, but possibly even towards the 88 level. And um, that's what you're kind of seeing here. I don't see too much mm. upside danger here. We, you know, we, we're certainly capped on the upside here at the 90 level. Um, but a distribution to the downside, we're basically, basically trading towards the moving average. And if you assume that this is a dominant trend, it should resume to the downside, especially given the fact that Canadian data uh, was so positive. So those are the three ideas of the three looking at the charts and the configuration of what we have ahead of us. Certainly, Euro pound looks the one as the strongest breakout candidate for the week. Wish you guys the best luck, the best trading. Bush Lonsberg, over now.